In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do triplanar projection of textures in Unreal and Unity. Let's go. So first things first, two weeks ago, I showed you how to do texture projection uh, by using the position of the object as the texture coordinates to look up into your texture. And then last week I showed you how to create a mask using the vertex normal uh, to just mask off the parts of the projection that you wanted. These two videos are really key to understanding what we're gonna talk about today. So if you haven't seen my video that I released two weeks ago and also last week's video, you probably wanna go back and watch those videos first before you watch this one. Uh, I'll link those down in the description. Okay, so let's dive right into talking about triplanar projection. First, what does that mean exactly? Well, usually when we apply texture coordinates, or usually when we apply a texture to a model, we use texture coordinates. But instead of doing that, uh, what we're gonna do today is project the texture onto the model in the X, the Y, and the Z direction. Right now we're looking at an example, and this is what we did last week. We're looking at an example of projecting the texture from the Y direction or from the top and from the bottom. And so what we're gonna do today is expand on that and project the texture also from the front and from the side. So in order to do this, there, there are actually two different ways we can do this. There's the really cheap way uh, that has a little bit of an artifact and there's the more expensive way that looks really pretty, but, but it costs more, obviously. So we're gonna take a look at the cheap method first, and, and then I'll show you how to do the more expensive method. So in order to do the cheap method, what we're gonna do is create texture coordinates for a top projection, a side projection, and a front projection. Then we're gonna blend those texture coordinates together, and then we're gonna use those coordinates to look up our texture. So let's get going with that. So here we have uh, our position, our vertex position, and we have a top projection. And we get our top projection just by taking the X and the Z. So the, the top projection is a projection on the Y axis, so the next thing that I need is a projection on the x-axis. So I'm going to add another swizzle node here. And anyone, anytime you want to project in an axis, you isolate the other two axes to project on that axis. So I want to project on the x, which means I need to isolate the y and the z. So using the y and the z positions will give me a projection on the x-axis. Similarly, uh, for projecting on the Y axis, I need the X and the Z axis. And then, or the X and the Z components of the position, rather. And then to project in the Z axis, I need the X and the Y. Okay, so these are going to become my texture coordinates. And I need to, uh, so I'm going to pro project in the X, the Y, and the Z. And now what I need to do is blend them together. So I'm gonna add a lerp node. And first we're going to blend between the X and the Y. And down here, this is the, uh, this is the mask that we created in last week's video. And if we take a look at this, you can see that we have one mask for the Y, which is green, a mask for the X, which is red, and an X for the Z, an, a mask for the Z, which is blue. Uh, so if we use our split node here, we can split these masks apart. Let's just preview what they look like really quick. So the X mask is projected from the side, and it looks like this. So this is the mask that we're going to be using. So we want to... Uh, since our mask is white for the X, that's why we put the X in the second uh, input port of the Lerp node, because we're going to be blending between uh, the Y, which is the top, and the X, which is the side. And then we're going to take the result of that and do another blend. So I'm going to add another Lerp node. We're going to Lerp between that and our Z projected coordinates here. 
And since we want uh, we want to mask out the Z, we're going to grab here. Let me just delete these here. We're going to grab uh, our mask, which is blue, which is our Z mask. And I'm going to plug that into our lerp. OK, so now we're blending between our X projection and our Y projection. And then we're taking the result of that and blending between that and our Z projection. And so what that's going to give us is uh, coordinates projected from the top, the side and the front. So let's plug these new texture coordinates that we just created into our texture sample and then plug our texture sample into uh, my master stack over here. And so what this is going to give us is textures pr projected from the top, the side and the front. OK, it's sort of working, but you can see that there is some distortion around the borders here. So let's fix that up. What you can see from our mask here is that there are blend zones um, between our projections. So we have this area that's kind of purpley um, where we're blending between red and blue. And we have this area that's kind of, um, I don't know, light blue green where we're blending between the green and the blue. And the method that we're using uh, for, for doing our projection by blending texture coordinates Texture coordinates don't really blend. They don't really lerp. And so what we need to do is create a hard cutoff here between our masks. And so the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to add a round node so that our mask can can have a sharp edge. Uh, so we're going to round between the red, the blue and the green to give our mask a sharp edge. And then as well, there's one more kind of artifact here and that's this area uh, where the three masks are coming together there's kind of a uh, an, er an area where the the masks aren't shaped correctly and so the way I'm going to fix that is instead of raising to a power of eight to sharpen our mask I'm going to raise to a power of 64 and that will make our projection come to a nice tight point uh, instead of that weird triangle artifact. OK, so now we have our triplanar projection. We're projecting from the top, the side and the front. Uh, and uh, this works pretty well, except for we have these seams here. And you can see that the seams kind of sparkle a little bit as I move them around. I'm not sure how well that's going to come through on YouTube, but yeah, as as I'm moving my object around, the seams shimmer a little bit and uh, the textures don't really match up. And so you're probably asking, well, isn't there a way that you can just blend between these uh, instead of instead of having these sharp themes or seams? And there is a way that we can do that, but that is the more expensive method of triplanar projection. Uh, so what I what I want to tell you is uh, what we're doing here where we're blending texture coordinates based on our directional mask that we uh, went over last week. We're blending texture coordinates and then doing a single texture lookup here. This is the inexpensive method, mainly because we're only doing one texture lookup. Texture lookups are one of the most expensive things in shaders. And since we're just doing one of them, this is the cheap method, but it also gives us these seams. So in order to fix the seams, what we need to do is sample our texture three times and then instead of blending between our coordinates, we need to blend between our texture samples. So let's go ahead and do that. So these are our texture coordinates here and these are our blends and then here's our texture sample. Let's just duplicate this a couple of times and we're going to use our coordinates here. So this is our X projection, our Y projection. And then this is our Z projection. And now instead of blending between the coordinates, we're going to blend the textures themselves. So we get our X texture, uh, our X projection texture, our Y 
projection texture and our Z projection texture. And we're gonna blend between them with the same masks that we were using before. And now I'm gonna plug this into our master stack and let's take a look at the results that we get from this. Okay, you can see that it looks very similar to the way that it did before, except for I'm not getting these shimmering edges uh, that I did before, but I still have these hard seams. But now we can easily fix the seams just by getting rid of this rounding that we did. So before we were rounding so that we'd get those hard edges in our blend. So I'm gonna delete this round. And now you can see that our seam is a little bit smoothed out. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can switch our power node here, which controls uh, how much blending is happening. And so I set, if I set this to a power of eight instead of a power of 64, now we're getting smooth blending between our three projected textures. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we've got our top projection, our side projection, uh, and our front projection. And we've got these uh, nice smooth blending zones between our masks uh, that get rid of those seams that we had from the other method. Now, like I said, this method is a little bit more expensive because we're doing three texture samples instead of one. And this actually translates to a lot if we do a color texture, a normal map, and a mask texture. Uh, if we're using all three of our material textures uh, and we're sampling each of them three times, this turns, all of a sudden, this turns into nine texture samples. So this method can be expensive. Uh, and if you can get away with the other method where you're just blending between the coordinates, you should try to do that if you can. Um, but if those seams are just, uh, uh, if they're too apparent in your application, you probably want to use uh, this nice blending method instead. Oh, there's one other thing that I forgot to show, and that is you can control the number of times that you want your texture to tile in each of the dimensions by adding a multiply right here. So I'm gonna add a multiply just to increase the size of my position data. And so if I plug my multiply into my three swizzle nodes here, now you can see that it'll be tiled two times. And this multiply here, whatever value I type in, is the number of times my texture is repeated in a one meter space, in a one meter projection. So if I wanna project it four times in a meter, I can just type in a value of four. And if I, wanna, if I want it to repeat 50 times in a meter, I just type in a value of 50. <laughs> and then it gets super duper small. But anyway, that's how you can control the number of times that the texture tiles in one meter of world space. Okay, so that's how you do triplanar projection in uh, Unity. Oh, there is one more thing that I wanna show you. Unity has this really cool node called triplanar, which is doing exactly the same thing as all of this stuff, <laughs> except we're just doing it in a single node. So if I pick my cobblestones texture here, and let's see, we're tiling it three times. So I type three times here. And then I plug this into my base color and also my emissive. I should be getting uh, pretty much exactly the same thing now as I got from, uh, from what I did here. So Unity has a built-in node for doing triplanar projection, which is pretty cool. So I don't actually have to go through and build all this. Now this triplanar projection is the more expensive version so if you wanna do the, the version where you're just blending the texture coordinates, uh, you can do that by, by creating uh, the graph yourself like I did just a minute ago. Okay, let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do triplanar projection in Unreal. All right, here we are in Unreal and we're gonna pick up right where we left off last week. Last week we were talking about creating uh, the masks uh, for the uh, uh, directional projection masks, and that's what we've got here. And then here we've got our projection that's projecting our texture from the top. And we multiply our mask by our projection to get rid of the parts of the projection that are smearing down the sides. Well, let's go ahead and turn this into 
our triplanar projection. And in order to do that, uh, just like we did in Unity, we need to uh, take our position here and uh, we need an X position, uh, a Y projection position, and a Z projection. So in order to do the X, we're gonna take the Y and the Z. In order to do the Y, we're gonna do, oh, this is the Z actually. Um, because we've left out Z here. So in order to do the Y, we need to leave out the Y and just do the X and the Z. Okay, so these are our three sets of texture coordinates. And now we need to blend between them. So we're gonna add a lerp node. So um, let's blend between the X projection and the Y projection. And we'll take the Y to blend between those. And then let's blend between that and the Z. And we'll take the Z component of our mask to blend between those. And then we'll use this as our texture coordinates. And we'll plug our texture into uh, our base node here. And just like we did in Unity, uh, we end up with a little bit of distortion on here to begin with. We still have our masks that have the blend zones between them. And so we need to sharpen these up. So instead of raising them to a power of 8, we're going to raise them to a power of 64 to tighten them up. And then we can get rid of these uh, border artifacts uh, by adding the round node here right after our divide. So there's our round and now we're going to just have our binary masks. And so now we have a mask for the X, Y, and Z. And they have these nice sharp edges. Uh, and we end up just like we did before. So this is, the, um, this is the fast, efficient way of doing it. Because we're just sampling our texture one time. Um, but we do end up with these seams on our model. So if we don't want the seams we can do it the uh, slightly slower way uh, of sampling the textures first and then blending between the texture textures. So I'm gonna take my texture sample here and duplicate it a couple of times. We're gonna use our X projection for the first sample, our Y projection for the second sample, and then we're gonna take our uh, Z projection for the third sample. And we're gonna blend between our X sample and our Y sample using our Y mask. And we're gonna blend between that and our Z sample using our Z mask. And then the final result is going to be those three textures blended together so I can plug that into my base color and now I have all three textures blended but I still have the seams and so I need to adjust my directional mask so instead of raising to a power of 64 we're just going to raise it to a power of 8 and instead of rounding, we're just gonna get rid of this round and that's gonna allow us to have a mask with these nice smooth blending zones, which completely gets rid of our seams. Okay, so there you have it. We've done our triplanar projection. And so now we have uh, a texture projected in the X, a texture projected in the Y, texture projected in uh, the Z and we're blending them together based on our directional masks. Now uh, that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. What we're going to do next time is uh, we're going to turn this system into a little bit more usable system because what we really want to do is do triplanar blending of our whole material not just a single texture. Um, here we've just blended uh, our color texture, um, but we're also going to want to blend uh, our normal map as well as uh, our mask texture. And there's a little bit of some, some special considerations that you have to use when blending normal maps. 
And so next time we're going to go over that. And we're going to turn all of this into uh, uh, a material function or in Unity a subgraph. Uh, so that it's a little bit easier to use. And so that we can go ahead and try planar project our whole material and not just uh, a single texture. I hope you'll come back for that one. Thanks a lot for watching today. I hope you learned something and that now you can uh, apply the principles that, that I've showed here uh, to create your own triplanar projections. And uh, we'll see you next time, everybody. I'm going to take a little bit of time off for the Christmas holiday. So uh, the next video that I'm going to release is going to be coming out uh, probably the second week in January. Uh, I hope you guys have a nice holiday and uh, look forward to seeing you again next year. Thanks for watching.